name of Jesus, we give God thanks tonight for he is a true God. Hallelujah. I often wonder and try to understand how can such a great God use dirt, or dust to make a being called man? He could have been any type of God he wanted to be in character. Bless the name of Jesus. But the God that made this universe, the Bible said, he has no beginning. Glory to God. He has no end. But yet still God desire that if you and I desire to live with him, to obey him, to love him with all our heart, he said that you're going to live with me forevermore. Give God the glory and the praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If this does not mean something to somebody, it means much to me. And I'm saying tonight that the church must fight. you got to strive to enter in at the straight gate. In the name of Jesus, you got to fight on glory to God to get into that kingdom of God. Bless the name of Jesus. So tonight I'm encouraging the saints of God. Wherever you are, whatever country you live in, I'm saying, hold on to the crown, bless the name of Jesus. Hold on to the realm, mighty God. Hold on at the feet of Jesus. Don't give up in the name of Jesus. you got to fight till you die. It's an opportunity that God has given to us. And the word of God says, it is not his will that any should perish but that all should come to the knowledge of repentance. Bless the name of Jesus. You see, it is not in God that he designed a product to destroy it, mighty God, but it is in God. He's cheering us on. The angels are rejoicing. When a man leaves darkness to come to light, they are rejoicing in the heavens. It means that God is cheering us on. He wants us to win, conquer him now, and still to conquer in the name of Jesus. Somebody got to win the fight. Don't know where that person is you. You have to know that for yourself. So I greet the church tonight. In the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Tonight. I want to thank God for the opportunity to be. Speaking the word of God over this platform. That some soul could be edified. Give God thanks and praise. Tonight, as we look into the word of God, I am hoping and I'm trusting by the divine power of God. As the sister sang the song, I'm hoping and I'm praying that the church is still the church. Hallelujah. She sang the song and I'm only praying and trusting. Let the church be the church and not anything else. Glory to God. Today we are putting all kind of ingredients into the church of the living God. And I'm saying, let the church be the church according to how God has set up the church to run. Let the church be the church. Hallelujah. Greetings to the most high God. Greetings to the Godhead, Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost that is among us in all his supreme power. I greet Amen. you tonight in the name of Jesus. Had it not been for the Lord that was on my side. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I would have been dead already. I would have been destroyed already. There is an adversary that is seeking to destroy our souls. But there is a God. Mighty God, there is a God that is fighting on your side. There is a God that is watching your back. You are the apple of his eye. Had it not been for God that was on your side, you would have been dead already. So we give praise to this God. Glory be to God. In the name of Jesus. Greetings to the saints of God. Greetings to the mothers of Zion. Children in Christ, greetings in the name of Jesus. Tonight's topic, 
Listen to me carefully. Tonight's topic is a question. Tonight's topic, you could take it as a question. It's also a statement. Tonight's topic is something for you to think about. The topic for tonight is in church, but not in the church. Hallelujah. Are you one that attend a church? Are you one that is in the church? Bless the name of Jesus. The word of God says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5, before we come back to the scripture reading, hallelujah, serious topic tonight. 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, sorry, 13 and verse 5, the word of God says, examine yourself. Tonight is examination night. It doesn't matter who you are. It is time to take out pen and paper and consider whether you are in the church of God. Hmm. The Bible said, examine yourself whether you be in the fear. Prove your own self. My God, examine yourself whether you are in the fear. The word of God says in Ephesians 1 verse 5, there is one Lord, there is one faith, and one baptism, mighty God. Hallelujah. The scripture says, other sheep I have, John 10, which are not of this fold. He said, them I must also bring, that there can only be one fall. Hallelujah, glory to God. Today, my friends, there are churches all over the globe. Mighty God, they're opening by all type of name. I'm not preaching name tonight, but not every church under heaven belongs to God. In the name of Jesus, you've got to examine yourself. Hmm. Tonight, I'm saying to you that you could be existing for 20 years in a church and that church does not have to be the church of the living God. I wonder if somebody understands what I'm talking about tonight. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost talking alone. He said, move on. Show you what I'm talking about tonight. The Bible says, ah, I feel a preaching spirit on me tonight. In the book of Acts chapter 9, from verse 1, glory to God. The Bible said, and Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord. And unto the high priest went unto the high priest, mighty God. The word of God says that Saul, before his name was changed to Paul, he was breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, mighty God. My friends, the church in those days, hallelujah, glory to God, was the church of the scribes and Pharisees. The scribes and the Pharisees, they were supposed to be the people of God. The Bible said he went unto the high priest. In those days, you and I know that in the days of Moses, in the days of the Levitical priesthood, that the Lord set up the church. The scripture clearly make you and I to understand in the book of 1 Corinthians, or Acts rather, sorry, that this is he that was in the church in the wilderness. The church did not start yesterday, mighty God. The church started a long time ago. So even in the wilderness, they had the church of the living God, mighty God. But those that was running the church, they were called priests. What am I saying? I'm pointing you to something. So the priests, from Aaron being the high priest, his sons were priests, and from the loins of Levi, 
God said that Levi shall become priest unto me. They shall minister before me. So the leaders of the church back then were not called pastors, but they were priests and high priests. Why am I saying this? Because Apostle Paul, his name before he came into the church, his name was Saul, mighty God. And Saul was working on behalf of the man of God, the high priest. So Saul went and he was breathing out threatenings against some people that was calling upon a name that he did not yet know. Glory to God. I'm going somewhere with this. Saul was in the church back then. Glory to God. Saul was a faithful church goer. Saul was a disciple of the high priest, the Sadducees. He was set up of the sect of the Sadducees. He was straight, mighty God. Saul was in church, but Saul was not in the church. Glory to God. I wonder if you understand what I'm saying tonight. I want to repeat it one more time. Saul in those days, he was in church, but Saul was not in the church. Hallelujah. Jesus said in the book of Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18. Let me see if I find it and read it for you. In the book of Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18. He said, and I say also unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, glory to God. When Jesus came to earth to fulfill his father's business, that's why he told his mother, he said, don't you know that I must be about my father's business? His father sent him down to set up the church of the living God. He said, upon this rock shall I build my church, oh glory to God. Not every church on earth belongs to Jesus Christ. Mighty God, you need to understand this. You can spend 15 years of your life, 25 years of your life being in a church, but you are not in the church of the living God. Mighty God, Paul, his name was Saul. He was in a church, but he was not in the church of the living God. Mm. <laughs> Mighty Father, imagine Apostle, imagine Saul, he was working on behalf of the high priest. Let me read down to give some clarity. The Bible said, and Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord. You see who Saul was threatening? You see, who Saul desired to kill? That's why the Bible said, touch not the Lord's anointed. Do thyself no harm. Saul was in a church. And Saul thought to himself that he was doing the business of God Almighty. Ah, oh, glory to God. Be careful, my friends. The Bible said, examine yourself and check whether you're in the faith because you can be fooling yourself for a very long time. I don't know who this word is for, but whosoever they can fit, wear it in the name of Jesus. Examine yourself. Saul was confident. Saul was boastful. Saul was bold. Saul thought to himself that he was working on the behalf of the Almighty God. But Saul did not know, glory to God, that the church have already went through a revolution. Glory to God. Saul did not know that there was a man by the name of Jesus. He came to earth, glory to God, and he discipled 12 men, and he turned the world upside down. And Jesus said that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of God. As long as you are in the church of God, no matter the storm, no matter the threatenings, no matter the slaughter, they can kill you, they can destroy your body, hallelujah, but they can't destroy 
destroy your soul. Bless the name of Jesus. If you are in the real church of God, somebody said, God got my back. In the name of Jesus, you got to know, as the song man says, is my name written there? You got to know, Lord God, is my name in the book of the kingdom? Is my name written in the book of heaven? Is my name on the pages white and clear? In the name of Jesus. You have to know if your name is in the book. These are questions that I ask God for myself personally. You can't live as a Christian and don't know if your name in the book. Hallelujah. There's one time in the book of Acts when Apostle Paul wrote a letter. He said, greet Lydia. He said, greet Chloe. Greet some of the other ladies, he said, whose names are in the Lamb's Book of Life. You can't wait till you die to know if your name in the book. You can't wait till you die to know if you're in the church. If you wait until you die, you are wasting precious time. Who am I talking to tonight? You're 25 years and a half. You're in a church, but the church is not God church. I said, ask yourself the question. I'm preaching this uh, without apology because you have to know whether you are in the theater or out of the feet. You have to know that for yourself. I asked God this for myself a long time ago. Hallelujah. Because I'm not going to run if I don't know whether I'm in or whether I'm out. Some of us are running in vain. Hallelujah. So God give me this word to tell some people stop running in vain. Don't listen to what I'm saying, but ask God the question, Lord, am I in your church? Hallelujah. I don't just want to dress church. I don't just want to sing praise. I don't just want to preach a sermon. I want to make sure that my name is in the Lamb's book of life because if your name not in the book hellfire gonna be your portion i say ask god whether you are in the theater or out of the theater stop wasting time my friend the word of god said that saul he was breathing out threatening and slaughter against the disciples of the lord hallelujah help me holy ghost tonight he went unto the high priest. Saul went unto his boss. Saul went unto the leader of the church back then. But at that time, there was a reformation. The high priest that took over the church from his forefathers, Jesus came and he reformed the church and he took away the keys from the high priest and he gave it unto Peter to be the new leader of the church. I wonder if you understand what I'm saying. There is a reformation taking place on earth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sometimes we are accustomed to formality. Hallelujah. We are accustomed to patterns. We are accustomed to the way it used to be. But sometimes there is a reformation and you have not seen where Jesus passed. Paul did not see where Jesus passed. He was fighting against Jesus. He was kicking against the bricks because he thought to himself that he was well Working for God, mighty God, in the name of Jesus. Saul thought that he was working for God, but he was working against God because the church have been reformed. The high priests have lost his connection with God. The high priests have lost his authority with God. Somebody remember Eli. Hallelujah. There was no open vision in those days. The Lord stopped talking to the church. Hallelujah. If you're going to church and God not talking to the leader, it's time to run away. Are you in the church or are you out of the church? Glory to God. The word of God is saying tonight, hallelujah. And Saul desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues. I wonder if you're reading with me tonight. If you're reading, say hallelujah. I hope you're understanding my language. Hallelujah. The, of the Bible said, Saul desired letters. You can imagine that. 
the man is desiring letter to go and kill some people that he don't know belong to God. Jesus, watch your mouth how you speak against people. Because the Bible said the first shall be last and the last shall be first. There is a replacement coming. The Bible said the prostitutes and the harlots and the man you call drunkard and you look down on. The Bible said that they are going to come into the kingdom and the children of the kingdom. You listen to the word of God. The children of the kingdom, they are going to be cast out when you should have been your name on your seat, named Chloe or Alexander. And, uh, your crown, mighty God. The Bible said, take heed that no man take your crown. Imagine Alexander, when you look in the kingdom, you see Chloe, who was a prostitute. She was a harlot. She had on your crown. She take your place because you taught that you was in the church, but you're going to replace a long time. Mighty God, I'm saying examine yourself. Mm. Saul taught that he was working for God. <clears throat> Regin, are you working for God? I challenge and dare any one of you on this line that you could tell me for sure that you know you're working for God. Hallelujah. Because the truth be told, some of us are guessing. Mm. And some of us just don't want to know because we're scared to find out that God say, I have never known you. But it's best God said that he never knew you and you ask him, then Lord, how can you get to know me rather than in the end to find out I never knew you? I challenge any man tonight. Go and pray and ask God, am I your servant? The scripture says that Saul desired of him letters to go to Damascus, to the synagogues. That if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them born unto Jerusalem. Saul is saying, if I go up, to Damascus. And I find any man in Damascus calling on this man called Jesus a false prophet. Mm. If I find any man in Damascus calling on this man who claimed to be the Messiah, but what Saul didn't know that Jesus, he was the true Messiah that Moses prophesied about. He said, a man, a brother, shall the Lord raise from among your brethren. Him shall you hear. Bless the name of Jesus. Saul did not know, glory to God, that Jesus was the true Messiah. Saul did not know that he was not in the church of the living God. He was working fervently. He was working zealously on the behalf half of God, but he was not working for God, but he did not know. I'm saying tonight in the name of Jesus, you could be going out evangelizing. You could be preaching in the name of Jesus. You could sing the songs of Zion. Hallelujah. You could be going to church for 15 years of your life and none of that could be the church of the living God. I'm saying ask yourself the question, am I in the church of God? The Bible said, any man that exalts himself shall be a base. Glory to God. Don't make God embarrass you tonight. Nebuchadnezzar built a fortress. And he looked back and he said, is not this the great Babylon that I have built? The Bible said that God make him. He give him a heart of a beast. And he give him claws like beast. And he humble him for seven years to bite grass like a cow. Because God said, 
humble yourself under the mighty hands of God. Leave God people alone, mighty God. There were some people that they were moving on the other side, not with Jesus. And the disciples of Jesus, they saw them and they said, Master, we saw some men preaching and casting out devils in your name. Jesus said, there is hardly a man that can do this miracle in my name and speak evil against me. Not because you cast out a devil, not because you heal somebody. It means that you're on the Lord's side. Oh, glory to God. I hope somebody understand me tonight. Not because you have a gift. It means that you are in the church. You have to ask the Lord, am I in your church, God? Because the Bible said, gifts and calling are without repentance. Hallelujah. You could have a gift, but you don't want to be in the church. Oh, glory to God. Tonight is examination night. The Bible said, examine yourself and see whether you're in the theater. I don't want to live on earth to be wasting time. I don't want to live on earth to feel that I was in the church in the end to find out that God said, Pastor, I never knew you. Oh, glory to God. I run to God and I ask him the question. I said, show me, Lord, whether my name is in the book of life. I need to know, and if it's not there, I need to know how to get it there because I'm going to run for my life. I'm going to strive to enter. I'm going to fight to get in the kingdom of God. Glory be to God. Some of us need to know from tonight, glory to God. You have to go and ask the Lord. Stop living by guess. Hallelujah. The Bible said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. You're going to cast out devils. In my name, you're going to heal the sick. In my name, you shall eat deadly things and it shall not hurt you. These are signs. Oh, glory to God. These are things to know whether you are in the true church of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There are too much sick people now in church. Note my words. There are too many sick sick people in church, hallelujah, but you have to check to see if you're in the church, the church of God has power, mighty God, the church of God has the power of God, the church of God has signs and wonders, the church of God is not going to leave the people of God destitute, the reason why we are going through this dry season, because some of us have become like Eli, God stop talking to us, in the name of Jesus, there is no open vision, you know, hearing from God, but you're going and you're acting normal. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you tonight, and I'm saying let the Lord take up his rightful place in your life. In the name of Jesus, let the Lord take up the throne of your heart. In the name of Jesus, you have gone cold, you have gone sour. In the name of Jesus, I pray that revival fire begin to burn in your soul. In the name of Jesus, Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And I'm saying today, it is high time that some of us get back up and seek back for that relationship with God. The scripture says in Acts 9 and verse 4, he says, and Saul fell to the earth and he heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Glory to God. Saul thought he was working on the behalf of God. Mm. But Saul did not know that he was persecuting the true church of God. Could you imagine that? The man was ignorant all these years. He was a faithful disciple. He said in the book of 2 Corinthians 13, Paul said, According to zeal, he was a Pharisee, 
Oh, glory to God. He was strict. He was a, one of the strictest sect. According to the law, he was schooled by Gamaliel. He was excellent in the word, mighty God. But all of that was in vain. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. He said, I fight not like one beat in the air. Oh, glory to God. And when the Lord knocked him down, he asked the question. He said in verse 5, he said, who art thou, Lord? Immediately, he recognized that he was working on the behalf of crooks, mighty God. He was working on the behalf of fake men of God in the name of Jesus. And immediately Saul confessed. He said, who are the Lord? If you have such a power to knock me down, to pamble me, to blind me, you have to be God. And immediately he came out of a church and he joined the church of the living God. From that day onwards, Apostle Paul, he was riding for glory to God. He said he was the chiefest of sinners. He said he's the least of the apostles, but all oh, glory to God, he said, I press towards the mark, the prize of the high calling in the name of Jesus. Somebody needs to get in the church. Somebody needs to get their fight back. You need to meet the real Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Answer the question. I ain't come to preach this for joke, and I didn't come to preach here for likes. And I'm not looking for numbers. Uh, if you think that's me, you're wasting time. All I want to know is to make sure that I am a soldier in the army of the living God. Oh, glory to God. I'm going to fight till I die to make sure that my name is in the book of life. You ain't going to love me. I don't want to be loved by men. I want to be loved by God. The scripture remind us tonight that there was a young man called Gideon. Oh, glory to God. In the book of Judges, chapter 6. The word of God reminds me that God called upon Gideon mm, to reform the church. Mm, mighty God. There are some of you on this line. The Lord is depending. The Lord is looking for some of you to be a reformer of the church. In the book of Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 14, the Lord is looking to see if you're going to be a repairer of the preacher. Because the truth be told, in the days of Eli, there was a preach in the line. There was a preacher in the connection with God. Eli had lost the ability to communicate with God. And the Lord had to raise up Samuel to be a repairer, a restorer, a reformer of the preacher in the name of Jesus. And the Holy Ghost came upon Samuel and he started talking to Samuel. He said, Samuel, Samuel, oh glory to God. There are some of you on the line that the Lord is knocking at the door of your heart. He wanted to open up. There is a new connection. Oh glory to God. He won upon new wine in new bottles in the name of Jesus the truth be told some of our former forefathers they have lost connection let me not put water in my mouth and I'm not saying it's your fault it's their fault I'm saying when you have a connection with God you're gonna fight for it mighty God when God is talking to you don't be like the strong man Samson and play with the anointing of God I'm saying walk with God let God be your guide. Mighty God. Mighty God. Let God be your guide. In the name of Jesus, man can be your guide. Let God be your guide. Glory to God. God called on Gideon in Judges 6. He said, Gideon, in my own words, I ain't got the time to read it. He said, Gideon, I need you to do a work for me. Gideon said unto the Lord, who me? Because he considered himself as a nobody, but it doesn't matter who you are. God said, I'm going to use the base things of this world to confound the wise. 
God is not looking for the qualified. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. You ain't got to speak properly like Moses. Hallelujah, you ain't have to be educated. Don't let them fool you. As long as you're humble and your heart is willing to do the will of God, the Lord can use you. He have heard the cry of Gideon. Gideon was crying in his heart. He said, where is the God that they spoke about in the days of Egypt and the angel of the Lord? Oh, glory. To God. Some of you are going to get visitation as long as you have a cry and a yearning for more of God. The angel of God is going to visit you. The Holy Ghost is seeking for a true worshiper. Hallelujah. He wants to bring you out of just being in a church and he want to bring you in the church. Hallelujah. It's the son of saints on higher ground. I'm Pressing on the upward way, glory to God. New heights uh, I'm gaining every day. Still praying as uh, I onward burn. Lord, plant my feet uh, upon higher ground. I'm fed up on shallow waters. Uh, hallelujah. Launch out into the deep. Uh, I'm fed up a valley. I want to climb the mountain high. I want to meet with the Savior in the name of Jesus. He said, Gideon, I want to use you to reform Israel. Mm. When the Lord called Gideon, oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Mighty God. When the Lord called Gideon, Gideon called, he made a clarion call. All those that are willing to be in the church of God to fight on the behalf of God, he made a clarion call. The Bible said in Judges 6, 7, he said, 32,000 men, they came out to fight on the behalf of God. Mighty God, soldier in the army of God. But when the Lord sent his scanner, when the Lord passed his eyes, he said, Gideon, most of them, they're in church, but they're not in the church. Glory be to God. He said, Gideon, I'm looking at the army, but 32,000 is too big. He said, they're just there, but the spirit not there. Glory to God. Are you in church, but you're not in the church? I'm saying, fight. You got to contend for the faith in the name of Jesus. Examine yourself. When the Lord passed his eyes, he said, Gideon, the army is too big. He said, put them on a test. Ask them one question. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The question the Lord gave Gideon, he said, ask them, is there any man afraid? If you're afraid, if you come to fight and you're afraid, it's time to go home. Mighty God, I understand the scriptures when the Bible said, be watchful, be vigilant in the book of 2 Peter. Because your adversary is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. I have only now come to understand this scripture. He said, Gideon asked the army the question. If any man is afraid, let them go home. Hallelujah. The Bible said 22,000 men, they turn around and they walk away. This tell me a lot of us in church, we dress like Christians. We put on our best fancy clothes. Hallelujah. The heels are high and you look like a sister of God. The hat is large and you sing the best song. But you're in the church, but you're afraid afraid of the devil. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. The Bible said, when the enemy come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. If you ain't got no Holy Ghost in you, you can't fight no devil. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible said, if no man or if any man have not the spirit of God, he is none of his. Hallelujah. You could go to a hundred church. If you ain't got no Holy Ghost, you're not in the church of God. Tonight I'm saying it's time to cry to God. We need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost back in the church of the living God. Hallelujah. Welcome tonight. It's nice. Hallelujah. 22,000 men turn back. You know what this means? This shows me. Huh. It's not the multitude. Mm -mm. It's not the multitude. When God was walking through Israel and leading the children of Israel out of Egypt, 
The Bible says 600,000 men, besides women and children, they left on the journey. Glory to God. And God had them in the church, in the wilderness. And every one of them, he killed them out. He knocked out every one of them. He wiped out every one of them. God made a promise with himself that none of you shall go into the promised land. There was in the church, but almighty God, there was not in church. Mighty living God. Only Gideon, not Gideon, sorry. Only Joshua and Caleb. Only these two, along with 20 years that and uh, the Lord brought into the promised land. My friend, I'm asking you the question. Have you examined yourself lately? Have you tested yourself? Uh, you know, if you're in the church, mighty God, get the Holy Ghost back in the church. Uh, in the name of Jesus, without the Holy Ghost, uh, you got no church. Uh, churches today running by program. Hallelujah. They're running by items. Uh, mighty God, they're running by how I feel. Uh, and it's all kind of nice things but are not things of God except the Holy Ghost from the church you're running in vain get the Holy Ghost back in the church I don't want to be in no church that don't have no Holy Ghost anytime I walk into a church and have not recognized the manifestation of the Holy Ghost I am going to run for my life because I recognize in the book of Revelation chapter 7, unless the Holy Ghost put a seal in your forehead, you cannot be saved in the kingdom of God. If you're in a church that have no Holy Ghost, it is not God's church. You are wasting time. Paul or Saul was in a church. It had no Holy Ghost. Run by the high priest. They set up the temple. All the standards. The Levites was in place. Hallelujah. The priests were burned in incense, but Jesus said, scribes and Pharisees, he hypocrites, he said, mighty God, he said, you, in the book of Luke 8 and verse 44, he said, ye are of your father, the devil, imagine that, he's telling the high priest, the scribes and the Pharisees, that their father is the devil, he said, you don't know me, because you're not of God, some of you are going to devil church, glory to God, in the name of Jesus, you're gonna come out of devil church and run to God church. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that I ain't running no devil church. Wanna make sure that when I call God, I mean God. So, Spirit of the Living God, tonight, as I bring this word to a close, I pray and trust that I'm only be led by you and you only. If there be any other spirit that want to lead me, Lord God, shut it down in the name of Jesus. Let the Holy Ghost alone be the guide and the leader. I commit myself, oh God, and I pledge allegiance in the name of Jesus to the Lamb of God. Have your way, Father, in the name of Jesus. So the word of God says 22,000 soldiers went to. God says, Gideon, the army is still too big. Mm. Close with this for you to understand. Gideon said, Lord, what shall I do? He said, Lord, the Lord said, take them down to the brook. Mm. And put them on a test. I've been reading this story for a long time. And it's only today I come to understand the real depth of this story. And I close with this. I was driving through the city today. And I met a young man while driving. I saw a young man run. But the young man, I know him to be an ex-convict. Life of drugs and life of crime. It's not my business to judge him. But it's a point I'm making. And there was a car that was on my right. And the car, it drove up behind the young man. And I was looking at the posture of the young man. When the car drove behind him, he looked back and he was in a state of examination, examining who was in the car. 
The reason being because this was a young man that had been shot at already. And he was fighting for his life. At one time, he picked up a couple bullets. And by the grace of God, God saved him. Immediately, the Lord starts speaking and showing me. Every believer, listen to me carefully. Every saint of God that is in the church, their life must live like an ex-convict. <laughs> what is the preacher saying? Whenever a gunman kills somebody, such an individual is always on the lookout for if somebody would return to kill him. Mm. Get it somewhere with this. The young man looked behind him with alertness. He looked behind him with vigilance. He's always on the lookout because somebody could take him out at any time. The Lord says, so a believer must live the life. Jesus said unto us, glory to God. He said, be watchful. He said, watch and pray. Be vigilant. Hallelujah. So God said, take them down to the brook and make them drink water. He said, any man that drink water and a lap like a dog, he said, those are the men that you must take to go and fight with. The Bible said only 300 men, they were vigilant. They went down to the brook, but they were watching for the enemy. If you're a true servant of God, you can't live your life loose. If you're in the true church of God, you got to watch out for the adversary. Because your adversary has a a roaring lion is seeking whom he may devour. Be vigilant, be watchful in the true church of God. You gotta look out for the adversary. So the Lord bring down the church of 32,000 to the true church of 300. Mighty God. My friends, tonight I ask you the question. As I close this word tonight by the power of the almighty God. You say that you are in the church. I say that I am in the church. Let's not fight. The question is, what does God say? Is pastor in the church? Are you in the church? It is left to God. 32,000 thought they were in the church, but only 300 was in God's book. I wonder if you're understanding me. Saul thought that he was in the church, but in God's book, he had no name for Saul. He only knew a man named Paul. So he says, Saul, from today, your name shall be Paul. Mighty God. Some of you, God, have to change your name in the name of Jesus. He don't know no Jeanet, but he might know Jameson. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Say, Lord God, I need a name change. I want to make sure that my name in your book. If Harry is in the book of life, then I want my name changed to Harry in the name of Jesus because I don't want to be in church. I want to be in the church. Let God write his name my name in his book, rather, in the name of Jesus. Ask yourself the question, are you in church for all these years or are you in the church? God bless you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory Amen. To God.